There are 18 weeks, 32 teams, 272 games, 576 slots, nearly 1 billion options for each team, hundreds of trillions of possible combinations overall, but there is just one perfect solution. Go behind the scenes with us as we take you inside the making of an NFL schedule powered by AWS. All right, here we go. When we are in this room, which we haven't been for a year, but uh, when we're in this room, the scheduling process uh, begins with Howard Katz. We feed all the schedules to him. He's the authority. I usually sit right next to him, trying to read his mind, trying to understand what he means when he says that sounds like a football game or that doesn't feel right. Howard Katz, Mike North are the, the stalwarts. They are the ones who kind of drive that engine. Howard from the you know big picture. He's the artist, Mike is the scientist. He is the one who drives the computer. Having Howard and having that gut and instinct and, and art side, if you will, is, is, a, is a huge piece of this entire puzzle and how the schedule gets made. You know, over time, Mike, Howard and I have worked together for so long. You know, we have an understanding, we have an institutional history and knowledge. And then when you add, you know, Charlotte Carey, Blake Jones, Nick Cooney, every piece of the the pie kind of contributes to the whole. Like a well-oiled machine. The process runs really smoothly. As long as the hardware and the software behave, hopefully we can keep finding these schedules day after day, and they're getting better and better each day, so that by the time we get in front of Roger at the end of this process, the one we're handing him is one we're really proud of. So why don't we start with the thought of what else we would put in the, in the doubleheader window? So all those big doubleheader games could go down and stand alone somewhere. If we put two good ones up in week one, we're going to have to go get, you know, another game somewhere to stand alone. Fair enough. If we think Cle Green Bay, New Orleans, and Cleveland, Kansas City is reasonably comparable, I want to see as many options as you can, as you can give us, okay? When the 2020 regular season ended on January 3rd, you know, Monday, January 4th, we were right on the software loading in what we now knew to be the 272 matchups for 2021, and we start from scratch. You gotta figure it out. So the matchups are set by a combination of rotation and previous year's standing. The NFL has 32 teams, and we are divided into two conferences of 16 teams each. And within each conference, we've got four divisions of four teams each. So now in course of 17 games, you're gonna have every team plays their three division opponents, each home and away, so that's six games. Then every team in that division will play another division in their own conference, two home, two away. So that's four more games, that's 10 total. And then they'll play a division in the other conference in its entirety, two home, two away. So that's 14 total. Now there's two more in your conference by standings. The first place team in the East will play the first place team in the South and the West. The second place will play the two seconds. The third will play the two thirds. So that's two more games for 16. And now in an expanded season, we'll do the same in the other conference. We'll play an inter-conference game against a division that you are not playing already this year, that you didn't play last year, that you're not playing next year, and that'll be a standings-based game. This is now even more places to put each of those games. And they can go now in any one of 17 weeks, so the solution space was already infinite. And we didn't just double or triple or quadruple the size of it. We exponentially increased the size of it. We always liken this to trying to find the best grain of sand on the beach. We're no longer just looking on a beach. We're now looking in the Sahara Desert. It is truly, truly infinite. I'm learning, I'm learning. That was just, wow. We always knew that a 17-game season was on the horizon, possibly. 256 games over 17 weeks, while already all but impossible, was a lot easier than 272 games over 18 weeks. And we got some breaking news here for you on this Path to the Draft Pro Day special. It is now official, DJ. We are going to get an additional game. The season just got bigger. We just added another week. I mean, you want to talk about the algebra and the algorithms they're going to have to Takes up everything. Week now. Look, I think that when you go from 256 games to 272 games, it, it feels like it's 16 more games. How much harder could it be? But when you think about it mathematically in the search space, 16 additional games and a 272 game grid just made it 
exponentially bigger. I, I can't even quantify the numbers. I've been doing this seven years and I still don't know. The easiest way to think about it, I found when I explain it to people is, if Howard Katz or Roger Goodell says to us, here's 10 games that I think should be on Sunday Night Football. There's 3.6 million ways just to lay out those 10 Sunday Night Football games. Hey, it's Sunday Night Prime Time. Another game on the list, baby. Another game on the schedule. We need a win. Better. So one game that's on the docket this year is Green Bay is going to play Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes up against Aaron Rodgers. Let's dominate a football game, baby. It was something we were robbed of seeing, guys, back in 2019. I mean, come on. Rodgers would have been 40 the next time those two were supposed to meet each other. High-profile quarterbacks, high-profile teams, fan bases. That's about as appealing a game as there is. Where Tampa New England lands is going to be interesting to see over the next month as we're considering so many possible homes for it. There is a lot of excitement in this town about this game. For us, it's a once-in-a-lifetime sort of game. It's Tom Brady return. And there it is. The dynasty continues. And that's the hardest part of the job is how do you deploy a game like that? This is what we want right here. Oh, that's cool, bro. Um, can you tell me who uh, Val Pinchbeck is and what his <laughs> role is? Hey, hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Hello, hello. <laughs> Val is uh, kind of the legendary schedule maker of the NFL for you know many, many years and created the schedule during that time when the NFL grew to prominence. If I'm proud of something, it's being part of the NFL when it gone, went from sort of a mom and pop thing in the 60s to the kind of big business it is today. Val, you know, on you know sheer force of mental will and intuition, built a schedule by hand and they were lucky to complete one and felt great to complete one that was legal and played all the games and got network TV done and we churned through hundreds every day. You're so good. That happened fast. And so Val used to build the schedule with a board just like this. He would sit here and all these tags, these represent home games, so this would be Washington at Los Angeles, Seattle at Los Angeles, all these tags would be hanging down here at the bottom of the board and it would be a blank piece of paper. It would be carte blanche, Christmas morning, you could do anything you wanted. The little white circles or some stadium blocks and we would start hanging these tags up one at a time. Every game that you like, you put one of these colored pins in. These are for our national television partners. So if you like this game, this green pin goes in the Atlanta Carolina game and that's on Sunday Night Football in week three. Now, if anybody came by this board and gave it a whack, all the other tags could fall off, but not that Atlanta Carolina game on Sunday Night Football in week three. That's the one that we want in that week. And all the others really just needed to find a home as we built the schedule by hand. Every single one of these tags that moved, every single one of these pins that moved caused a ripple effect that you couldn't even begin to consider while you were doing this one dag at a time, one game at a time. And Val was a savant. Val could sit and stare at this board for hours on end, and he would sit here and he would crack open pistachios, and he would eat the pistachios and stare at the board, and he'd put the shells on his belly. And so after about 20 minutes, he'd have a whole bunch of empty shells, and he'd get struck by inspiration. He'd stand up, dump the shells into the garbage, move this tag here, move that tag there, move that tag there, and move that tag there. It was amazing to watch. And hey, this guy's really good now. You know, what Val used to do is, uh, you know, legendary to all of us, and then very appropriately that that room is named after him, and then we, we have a lot of respect and debt for what, what he accomplished and set the table for us. It's inconceivable to think that we could even do this thing by hand right now. So we're very fortunate to have a really robust piece of software that essentially looks just like this. When we talk about what our software prints out, it prints out this board. The reds and blues for CBS and Fox, the greens and yellows for NBC and ESPN. We essentially built a piece of software to mirror the process that Val used to go through when he sat here with his pistachio nuts and stared at it. So this looks a lot like that. It's the same colors, it's the same grid, it's the same columns and the same rows. This piece of software was built by a company out of Western Canada called Optimal Planning Solutions. So we write the rules in the software, and then the software from Optimal Planning uses an optimizer called Garobi Optimization, which takes all the rules and really tries to figure out, okay, if this is an infinite solution space and these are all the rules I have to follow, where do I even start? And let us begin. 
What we're able to do between Optimal Planning Solutions and Garobi is we're able to utilize the AWS cloud. Every one of these lines is a different AWS computer. Each of these 3,000 AWS computers can be working on a different schedule, all at the same time, all with the same rules, and all talking to each other about what works and what doesn't. That worked really well. That's high quality. When we ask the computer to go off and search through the infinite space, not only does it need to know which of these games are eligible for which of these time slots, and certainly which of these stadiums are not available for various conflicts, and what are our travel considerations, and all the stuff that we're asking it to consider, in that consideration list is competitive fairness. So the way we do that is with a negative-based scoring system where we put a penalty on all the things we don't want to see. That's both team-wise and television-wise. So for instance, three-game road trips and road after road Mondays and early buys and two away to start and two away to finish and all the things that we know the coaches and general managers don't like. If I had a three-game road trip last year, then the penalty for me having a three-game road trip again this year should be significantly higher than for someone else who probably hasn't had a three-game road trip since 2003. We're also writing rules about a strong Sunday night football schedule, a strong Monday night football schedule, a strong Thursday night football schedule. Are you not entertained? You know, if we can't deliver all those things that our network partners are looking for, that should bring a penalty as well. The lower the score, hopefully, the less disappointed the clubs and the television partners are going to be. The most watched window of the NFL, of course, is Sunday at 425 and we are loaded. That's the day, the uh, the weekend of the Twin Cities Marathon. So you made our folks very right. happy. Okay, good. I hope you post a good time. The ability to, to work with the team at AWS and for our software to run on the AWS product can't be underestimated in the sense that being able to access hundreds, if not thousands of machines on a daily, nightly, hourly basis and, and just the computing power that's involved in there allows us to turn around scenarios and changes how we are able to think bigger, analyze more, but also react to things. We can go in and we can look at it. These are four separate clusters of AWS instances that could be anywhere in the world. Mike, keep it going, keep on going. Don't stop, don't stop, keep going. There's between 200 and 300 computers in each one of these clusters, and each one of these clusters is looking at a slightly different part of the beach. This one might have Green Bay, Kansas City on Sunday Night Football in Week 7. This one might have Green Bay, Kansas City on Sunday Night Football in Week 9. This one might not have Green Bay, Kansas City on Sunday Night Football at all. It might be on Monday Night Football, and this one might have Green Bay, Kansas City as a Fox doubleheader. So it will run on this one seed schedule, that one computer, for as long as it takes until it figures out if it can find a feasible solution. It's gonna be a long day. And so every single day, we have thousands of computers, all with slightly different seed schedules, all searching through this infinite space, trying to find a better score. They can do a lot of aim high steering for us that we could never do when we were building this schedule by hand. Yeah, I can, I can. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed, yeah. Mike and I meet, and our day really starts at 11 p.m. the night before. Mike and I meet, all of the solvers are off and running. We check in, we see how things are going, see what's solving on each of these clusters that we have. We have, you know, anywhere from like three to 5,000 different computers working on this problem for the entire night. I ain't tired, I ain't gonna get tired. I generally go to bed, and Mike stays up and takes the night shift and basically babysits the computers. All right, last check of the computers before bed, Thursday night. April 23rd. Here's all the clusters. Everybody's working. Found a few schedules. There's a good one. 3993. This one could be interesting. Love we'll to see if Charlotte likes it tomorrow when she wakes up. Good morning from the Carey household. It's just about 5 a.m. here on April 23rd, thanks to my trusty alarm clock who gets me up around this time every day. And let's take a look at what we got in here overnight. We have hopefully, uh, you know, anywhere between 50 and 100 schedules that we're looking through, have to cipher through those. And I take generally the, the six or eight best and send them to Howard and Hans and the entire team. Oh, nice. We got a nice low score here at 39.93 with a really good NBC schedule. Great double headers. I like those cross flexes. Good ESPN, really strong start. A good Saturday pool. This one is definitely a candidate for a deeper dive. We'll uh, put this one through the analyzer, send it around to Howard. Hopefully we'll have a new leader today. 
And then once we get into the meeting, we then do a deep dive on the analysis. Unless you do like a, maybe a Green Bay mini or something like that, I did ask research to send over a couple more numbers. And then after those meetings, regroup at 11 p.m. and do the same thing over and over and over until we find the mythical, magical, perfect schedule. Wow. That's good, deja vu. Countdown is over. Happy draft day, everyone, and good morning. Let's go Cleveland. So I think what we should be doing now is identifying what, if anything, we want to try to fix. So much of what's so good about this one is because of the key games chart. We should probably keep most of, if not all of it, really. This is really, really good. No reason not to use the time to try to fix that, but we shouldn't compromise everything that we like about this. As far as the scheduling process goes, we're in a really good spot. We presented a couple of legitimate contenders to the commissioner. We had no real significant negative pushback. So if we had to, we could play either one of those schedules tomorrow. The challenge for us is going to be reacting to anything we see tonight. If there is a big trade, uh, particularly at the quarterback position or a draft pick that maybe catches us a little off guard, you know, are, are we still comfortable with where we are in terms of national television appearances, big storylines coming out of the first couple weeks of the season? Is there anything that could happen tonight that's going to knock us off our stride? I mean, is there anything that's going to happen would, tonight that's going to... It would only be one of these established quarterbacks moving. Yeah. Right? Undermining a team we're counting on or propping up a team we didn't expect. If something happens that as a fan, you say, ooh, that's fun. As a scheduling team, we're going to say, ooh, that's trouble. We are just two hours away from the Jacksonville Jaguars being on the clock in the 2021 NFL Draft Live from Cleveland, Ohio. Weather isn't perfect, but that's not dampening anyone's spirit. Trevor Lawrence has been pretty much put in Sharpie since the day he was born. It seems to be the first overall pick of this draft. We're going to see him and Zach Wilson go 1-2, correct tonight? Uh, absolutely. I think it's going to start at 3. That's where the fun is going to begin tonight. Nobody knows what's taking place with the 49ers, so there's a lot of intrigue in this one tonight. Night, Rich. The draft is now officially open. Here we go. One minute to the commissioner announcing Trevor Lawrence to Jacksonville. One minute. I'm good. <laughs> I'm anxious. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence. I think Lawrence is going to play day one, and we'll probably find him on primetime somewhere early in the season. Probably the same with the Jets, I would imagine. Wilson? It is Zach's fifth avenue. The longer this clock goes down on San Fran, the more likely they are to actually make the pick, you think? So we've kind of been hearing about Mac Jones. My gut tells me Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance would take this offense in a new direction. I'd love to see it. I think it's a truly a toss-up what's going to happen. Pick is in. They actually pick. We're kind of rooting for Trey Lance here. That means Garoppolo starts and we don't have to blow it all up. It's Lance. 50 seconds, 5-0 to the commissioner, announcing Trey Lance to the Niners. All right, so it is time for one of the greatest mysteries of the NFL draft in recent years. The San Francisco 49ers select Trey Lance. And it is the Bison. I think at this point, we can just kind of relax and be fans, and hopefully it's not going to disrupt everything we've done. The Chicago Bears just traded wow. in to pick number 11. They are on the clock. That's got to be quarterback. There's no other way. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. You know, all the quarterbacks went. They went to some interesting places. Fields to Chicago is cool. Jones to New England's pretty interesting. Honestly, I, I think here at the end, we've probably dodged most of the bullets that were going to derail us. We're going to get through this one without having to completely undo everything we've been working on. More fireworks, if you will, here in Cleveland, Ohio. That'll wrap it up for night number one. All right, uh, late Wednesday evening, early Thursday morning, the day we're presenting the hopefully final schedule to the commissioner. I uh, got an email on my phone. Had to come see what all the fuss was about. Could be the magic seed. Uh, present one of these to the boss tomorrow, get his feedback. Still gives us the weekend to keep working if he wants any changes, but uh, this could be the one. We'll let you know how it goes. We're under a week away from schedule release. We're very close, but honestly, still not done yet. All right, leader on the left, contender on the right. Week one, still pit buff. 
Uh, we're going to go meet with the commissioner here in about an hour. We've been checkpointing with him kind of along the way once a week for the last month. Um, nothing he's going to see today is going to surprise him. And hopefully we can just get, you know, if not a rubber stamp, at least a, yep, I understand why you did it. It's just what you said you were working on, and I'm very comfortable with it. Commissioner's on six. He's uh, literally right above us. We'll gather up uh, Hans Schroeder and Howard Katz. Hopefully it's uh, for good news at the end. I'll be happy on Wednesday. Uh, it's gonna be a busy weekend. The computer certainly won't stop. My wife won't be thrilled with how we're spending Mother's Day, but uh, we will give it an honest effort right to the very end. And certainly at some point it is pencils down and this is truly the best we can do. We're close. I'm, I'm not sure we're there yet, but we're very close. Monday night. May 10th, we're finished. Um, we've got a winner, presented it to the commissioner this afternoon. Uh, there she is, in all her glory. Finally declared our final schedule about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, presented it to the commissioner on Monday, and uh, it's, it's really good. Glad it's over. Uh, we'll be calling the clubs tomorrow, Tuesday, with their schedules. Uh, released to the world on Wednesday night. Got a tea time for Friday morning, and uh, Monday we start on the 2022 schedule. Really looking forward to uh, getting back at it. Maybe get some sleep this weekend. Certainly let Charlotte get some sleep. That's it.